Good afternoon, we're Bruno. Uh, and I want to pose a question to everybody. See what you have here is uh, sachet plastic. I'm sure you guys have encountered this throughout the day, whether eating peanuts, the airplane coming over here to the competition, or in your hotel, showering up. However, after you consumed it, where do you put it? Throw it away. But where is the way? That's what we want to pose here. The myth of a way. Is there really something that's a way? When you throw it away, where does it go? Does a way even exist? Can it come over here, on the side, so you guys can see? This is a little picture of a garbage pile in Manila. It's called Payatas. Or could it be here, in the next place? Eaten up by some birds. This is a picture of a bird. Find some plastic in it. Or over here, flooding up, uh, causing some major floods in the Philippines stuck in some garbage sewers. Okay, if we go back and analyze production, we get it from natural resources, it goes into a scale or a plant. After the plant of production, it goes into a store for retail. Then it goes to the house for consumers. After which, where does it go? Even if you put it somewhere, hoping that someone will actually take care of that plastic for you, there's still some cost that are involved in that. So let's look a little further. Major problem in the Philippines, just last October, just recently, we had the biggest typhoon and caused major damage. It cost 464 fatalities and over $200 million in damages to the country. And the problem was attributed to the cloggage of the sewage system caused by plastics such as sachets and everything that comes with consumer items. Let's move a little bit. So there really is no way, if you really think about it, we throw it away, hoping that it disappears, but it doesn't really exist. But there is a way. And that way is, we're proposing, is the Puno system. So Puno, let's tell you a little bit about our, our company. Puno is a social enterprise that seeks to reduce post-consumer waste by means of sustainable, packaging-free retail systems applied to the distribution of natural, environmentally friendly products, household and personal care. So we put this in distribution system. So to explain furthermore, we have research and development. We've tied up with grassroots farmers and other natural products um, producers, artisans, both small scale and large scale. A little bit further, we source that. And we put that into a distribution system. That distribution system is a packaging free uh, retail system. So we design that. And that system goes into a network of community stores. Furthermore, we have um, ambulant vendors. But when I say ambulant vendors, these are people that do refilling already, like water refilling stations. We also have little stalls and stores, which, do, uh, which are packaging free. People come back with their own containers. And then mainstream commercial kiosks. So little, like in Watson's, we do a little packaging thing. I'll expound a little more on each individual item so that you grasp the concept of our product, what we're actually selling here. So we've already initiated our group. Two of our members have started a packaging free store. It started out as a stall, and now uh, we're opening our first store this March. And what we do is we do everything packaging free. We either use recycled um, glass where people can get them, or people come back with their own containers. That way, people don't spend on Hello? Uh, people don't spend on the packaging. And we've experienced over the past year of doing business with both our market uh, customers that out of 4,000 people that have, uh, are, are loyal customers, a lot of them, like 60% of them, have really come back with their own containers and actually feel good that they actually save money and they're actually doing something better for the environment. We've also tried out um, that type of distribution system in the lower income markets. We call it Sari Sari stores or in the wet markets, some, something that you see here in Bangkok. So we've tried that system out, both in the high-end area and in the low-end area. And the reception has been very positive. In the lower market, around 90% of them have re really returned with their own containers. It makes sense because they live right beside where the market is. They don't have to transport with their cars. So it makes sense for them to bring their own containers. Now that gave us an idea, or that inspired actually the Puno system which is like the scale-up model of that packaging-free type of distribution system. So we want it now to be implemented in a large scale. Because one small thing of changing packaging, or changing the use of packaging, taking it out altogether, will have large-scale implications. 
So we tried out tying up with ambulant vendors. People already do, you know, water delivery systems. So we pick it up in them. We ask them, can you distribute the natural products as well? Can you put it and add it to your list of menus? Anyway, you're already tapping into these people and do it in a packaging free way where people retain their own containers. And here, lastly, is a community convenience store distribution channel. We've made ties to partner up with a large distribution network called Happy Noy, which I'll expound on further in the later slides. But basically, Happy Noy is a distribution channel that provides microfinancing to large, to many convenience stores or small scale, low income convenience stores. The reach is around 10,000 households, but they um, now they distribute local products like consumer items, palm olive, Unilever products. But we want to change that system by integrating the Puno system or the packaging free system into that. Lastly would be the mainstream commercial kiosks, Watson's and other. So then we go to the next slide. Basically, let's look at the market. The lower income bracket market in the Philippines comprises 64% of the Philippine population. A household earns less than $4. They, the housewives in particular, are the big decision makers in this, in this market. They have social peculiarities, and, but this is an untapped market for natural and organic products. As I mentioned earlier, the ones that have dominance over this market are the big US brands because they have been able to get these sachets out into that system, which is what we're trying to change. If we allow small scale producers or natural products to reach the system, then that's a big opportunity to, to actually tap. Next market would be the middle class upper markets, comprising 7% of the population. Again, it's uh, um, $55 a day, and it's again the housewives that are actually the ones that are the big decision makers in the consumption. So they have middle class sensibilities, they have informed decisions on purchases, and they may seek out more sustainable options because it's a big trend, it's something that's new, it's something exciting. So this is a big market that we also want to tap. Next slide, please. The opportunity. As I mentioned, there's a growing Philippine organic trade market growing 10% already every year. It's an untapped market in our natural, organic, household, and personal care products. No one's really doing it yet in, that, in this larger scale. There's greater awareness now amongst businesses of, for more sustainable practice. We're three years, four years behind, but now pretty much it's a common household term, sustainability. So in this case, Puno has the first mover advantage in trying to reach larger scale distribution. And we've had, as I mentioned, strategic partnerships, which we're trying to implement. I'll go into that a little bit more. So first, our products. We curate certain natural products. To the left here, you have uh, dishwashing liquid, which is put in recycled glass, or it goes into the refillable container like this, which people, even in the lower income market, can get as much as 10 ml. So it's, it's calculated by weight, it's calculated, taking out altogether the packaging costs. So making that uh, 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 reachable for these people is a big opportunity. We have soaps, we have laundry powder here in the right side, which is also by weight, and also food products. Go, uh, everything is by weight and packaging free. So the key is actually developing local systems where people from that same community can just go up to the nearest store and refill their own containers. That's what makes it work. In the competitive analysis, we've seen four major quadrants. One would be conventional products, which are packaged, Conventional products, which are unpackaged, it exists already, but mostly in soap. We have natural products, which is predominantly all in plastic in the Philippines. And we have where we fit in the natural products, which are packaging free and plastic free. So, strategic partnerships. We've partnered up already. We've developed our partnership with Happy Noi. It's a micro ventures company. What they do is they have they tap a network of 10,000 households. They have 156 community source, and what they do is they microfinance these households so that the local uh, mothers have business. What they do is they do consolidating purchases and teach them, they have educational programs which just uh, teach them systems management. So basically, we've talked to them and they're quite excited in actually partnering up and putting this type of system partially in their, in their existing network. So that is a big boost in our scaling up. Social value proposition. Our idea is very basic. If consumers and retailers will adopt more sustainable retail practices, thus lessening post-consumer waste, then there will be environmental preservation and improved quality of life. 
And our social impact analysis, these are the several points we looked into. Savings of consumers and retailers via reduced packaging costs. If you take out the cost of packaging, that cost can now be passed on to both the, save, uh, the consumers and the retailers as savings. Reduced carbon footprint from reduced packaging, take out packaging altogether, or at least part of uh, most of it. Then you have large carbon emission reduction. Reduced government spending on waste management, and opportunity for small community producers to get their products out there in the market. Because for you to put it in this packaging, normally your, value, your volume should be around 250,000. But allowing people to do it packaging free, Cutting the cost allows small producers to reach that far market, that, un that untapped market. So these are basic figures on several items. We calculated the cost that people actually save on packaging. So there's a brief um, elaboration on our carbon cost um, calculations. The government savings on waste management. Here you have Filipinos have yearly solid waste of 146 kilos per capita, 50% can be attributed to these household packaging items. Okay. okay. So here, in the milestones, my colleague uh, Finley will be elaborating more on our financial semester. Uh, for the first year, we have, uh, uh, this are milestones for the first year. So we'll, we'll be opening a store um, called uh, Ritual this uh, March. So if you're in Manila, you can come over to visit. Uh, on the second quarter, we'll have four milestones. First is the uh, finalization of the dispatcher prototype, which is that. Uh, second set is the community production program, which is uh, educating the sellers uh, about the our products. Then we move on to retail, uh, retail introduction program, which is uh, quite the same as the uh, community introduction program, but more high end. And we'll be starting with uh, ten distribution uh, outlets uh, uh, in partnership with uh, Happy Noy. So on, uh, third, on the third quarter, we'll be starting our ambulant vendor operations. And in the fourth quarter, uh, we'll be starting our in-store kiosks, like the ones in Watson's. And uh, if the market conditions are favorable, we'll be scaling up our, our distribution network from 10 to 100 stores. So th these are our financials for three years. Uh, so um, here. Uh, there's a six-fold increase of sales from uh, year one to year two. Why? Because we'll be scaling up our, our uh, convenience stores from 100 to 1,000 stores. And uh, along with that, there will be a tenfold increase in uh, sales of the low-end low products and a double in sales of the high-end products. For the second to the third year, there's an almost double doubling of sales. That's because uh, of uh, doubling of our market share. So uh, our uh, capital, we calculated it, it's around $13,600. Um, our estimate is uh, our ROI is on the second year, which is typical for 15 of corporations. So basically, the strength of our team comes in the diversity. Basically, we all come from different backgrounds. Marielle over there is a designer. So giving strength in branding of the, the product. She's also a, a co-founder of Ideals and Creatives. So her expertise lies in marketing and communication. Finley is our MBA, uh, MBA student. He has a wholesale, his family has a wholesaling business, which gives us a better idea of how the wholesaling business works. He also a, has an engineering background. Beatrice Misa over here is, uh, works in a local NGO. Uh, she's actually the sustain, uh, Secretary General for Youth for Sustainable Development. She actually gives talks on waste management and has good strategic ties with our farmer, with direct farmers. And I'm basically a base partner in our store, which initiated the packaging free movement. And our advisor is Mark Ruiz, who does Happy Noi, and uh, Anna Melato Will, that does also a natural products company. Why invest in us? Basically, we are on the move. We've had success rates in our in small scales. We have the roadmap. We we have strategic plans to actually increase our basically our social impact. So we want. We're hoping that you guys would join us in actually where we're going because we're going somewhere and we want to make change. And our change will will happen sooner or later. But with your help, it'll be much hopefully sooner. Thank you. <laughs>